there was an article that Mark Beecham wrote that I uh, that I caught today. It was it was back from the end of January, but it was I thought it was interesting. I didn't uh, didn't exactly didn't want to just say here tell him about it. I thought you know this deserves a little introduction. How many people do not know anything about this Chapelgate issue? Zip. Oh. How many people know very little and came here to get the gist of the to get the skinny on the thing? A lot more of those. Perfect. Uh, the, the article starts, for any business or landowner who ever felt ill-treated by local government and fantasized about suing City Hall or the county, Rivera and Selmo's fight with Shasta County bureaucracy and its code book should bring some vicarious pleasure. <laughs> I was like, it doesn't say evil laugh there, but I was thinking it needed it. Um, since uh, 2005, Anselmo has spent well north so I guess that's in excess of, uh, 12 million on his 2,800 acre spread in Inwood off Highway 44, about a dozen miles east of Palisadro. In the process, he turned a struggling cattle ranch into basically a million dollar enterprise. Oh, I like this part. Besides the $84,000 property tax bill and the $101,000 and change, he's paid in sales tax since 2008. The Seven Hills Ranch and Anselmo Vineyards employs 38 people. So for the people that, uh, I, you know, I got some emails and stuff like that. It's like, why are we having this issue? This is like one guy's little problem. How many people get, you, you guys get the fact, right, that this isn't one person's problem ever anymore? Okay. I mean, I think we've, we've done that for such a long time. That's how we got, that's why we're here. Is because, you know, everybody's been trying to fight out of their own little paper sack and, we can't do it by ourselves. It just doesn't work well that way. Um, I, I like this one quote, and then, uh, then you can tell them in your own words. But this was a good one. I don't think you'd remember it. Uh, he says, they've never offered me a waiver on anything, <laughs> not an ice maker, a screw, or a bracket. They've always held me to the highest rigor. They stare at the code. You guys know what he's talking about, huh? They stare at the code. They have a pornographic addiction to the code. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know what, that's classic. <laughs> you can see it. Anybody who's ever dealt, how many people in here have dealt with code people? Oh my gosh, you are among friends. <laughs> there we are, we're going to start our own insurrection. So, do you like to go by Reverge or you RC? How come, he's RC. I know, because Carl Bott told me that. He said he's RC, they're like, why do they call him that? I, I don't know. I don't know that part. <laughs> Maybe you can tell him that part. Yeah, my name my name is Rivers Anselmo, but uh, seventy percent of the people can't say Rivers, so it's fine. Just call me RC, which is my middle initial. Um, I don't really have. Uh, I wasn't, you know, uh, sugge nobody suggested any particular frame of uh, the talk I should give you, so. Um, maybe I should pr pretty much just tell you what happened to me, right? Uh, in in the books out there, the the, the leaflets that I showed you, yeah, um, that in in a nutshell is just kind of the landscape of the way things are in the relationship that I have with Shasta County. I'm going to tell you the fascinating. We're going to get into the scuba diving and things like that in a minute. Um, uh, but the, what I wanted to point out is that the sales tax figure on that sheet, that's not what I pay in sales tax. It's that the ranch used to generate no sales. Well, when I bought it, it was derelict and they, they just leased pasture, you know, out to cattle. That's money that the state of California and Shasta County collect from a brand new enterprise in a place that was, it was barren. It, it contributed no taxes. I've been accused, uh, or you know, uh, people have suspected that I have some tax, uh, like some clever tax maneuver about building a private chapel on my ranch. Nothing could be further from the truth. I pay a lot more taxes than anybody else I know. And I don't avoid them. I have no tax avoidance strategies anywhere in my life. And anybody, IRS, if any IRS agents are here, Come and look. You know, it's not the first time my family has met the IRS. We've been audited many times. We don't fool with taxes, you know. Um, 
Yeah, so in, uh, we were harvesting in October 15th, 2007, and uh, we were getting drunk after the harvest, and a guy, an equipment operator named Garrick Lanzer, who was up on the Bear Creek Ranch, which is another ranch that I bought, to, uh, I had to protect it from being subdivided in, in between 52 and 110 parcels. Mostly because it was a threat on my water, not because I'm a radical environmentalist or anything. I, I, I mean, I have sound land management practices, but I didn't want 110 homes up on my water source. The neighborhood liked me doing that because they've been fighting it for 30 years, et cetera, and the water was safe and there's no subdivision up there. So we were, we were renovating the pastures for paddle. Sorry, the, the pastures for cattle. Uh, I have not had a drink. Uh, that's what we were doing. We refenced it, and uh, there was a lot of blackberry bushes. So they were 40 yards wide, nine feet high. You could hear the South Fork of Bear Creek, but you couldn't see it. And I put a brush hog on the back of the tractor and tried to cut my way to the water. I couldn't get there. So we brought in uh, uh, Terry Adams' goats from Red Bluff. One, uh, a lot of goats, 1,200 of them, I think. And they, they, uh, they ate through an acre a day. And they did that for six weeks so that we could see where to put the equipment. Now, here's the thing that I did not know. I'm an East Coaster. I, I've never really lived in California. This is a new experience for me. And you guys have a very bad out here. Uh, I, you, you know that you do. But I, I never even heard of somebody, uh, you know, confronting you about renovating your pastures or working your land. It's agriculture, right? Isn't, that's, that's just guaranteed you're allowed to do it. And it turns out that's all true. So a fish cop went up there. Uh, they always say that it's based on a complaint from an anonymous neighbor or something. And then they show up. They didn't pull a gun on the guy, but they started shouting at him. They made him shut down his equipment, and he came running scared to death to us. And we're drinking wine and, and beer. We, we don't want to. He said, oh, we got to go get a bunch of hay and spread this around uh, uh, along the, the, the creeks. So we did. Uh, we didn't want to, but we broke out our own hay bales and started doing this stuff. It, within, within 24 hours, I found myself at literally a bond slave to the state of California. With my back bent over, I'm spreading straw with, with, uh, with armed men telling me what to do, how much money to spend. Should I not do it? Uh, fines of 25000 or $10,000 per day if I didn't get right to it. Now this happened. I met them the next day and I heard um, the, the, the fish and game lady, I called her up and I said, I, I hear you want to meet with me up there. I said, well, what time do you want to meet up there? And she said in, you know, their California way, well, uh, sir, it's, this is like, this is not really an appointment because this is like an enforcement, so I don't have to make an appointment with you. So what time are you going to be there so I can meet you? So we went up there. <clears throat> I told them what I was doing. They accused me of, uh, I don't know why they always do this. In everything, they, they, uh, they accuse me of lying. They're the ones that must have that in their nature. Because when I said, I'm renovating a cattle pasture here, you could see brand new fences. You could see the area I had just worked and re -sewed. There's a picture of what it looked like after our work in that, where it says Bear Creek, you know. And uh, they refused to believe that. They, they, they uh, immediately they, they hit me with a, a cleanup and abatement order. And I'm, they said, rock-filled water bars, get them right now. Uh, that equipment doesn't move. No, you're shut down on this whole ranch. I mean, you're shut down. No equipment moves. Well, can we park it in the, in, in the uh, trees? No, didn't you hear? You're shut down here. I mean, it was like that. I really started to get mad. Uh, and right, I mean, right away, I, I called my attorney. Where this is going, it, just so that you know that this, is, uh, this doesn't have a, a sad story about it, uh, me and my attorneys, we fought them for 11 months, six hours a day, and you will see I reproduced it for you. The first time my attorney in 30 years of practice has ever obtained a rescission of a cleanup and abatement order. 
I did. <laughs> you, you have to fight hard, but if you, if you rub their noses in the law, they really have nowhere to go. So Water, water, water Quality Control Board got out of there. Fish and Game left the scene. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers left the scene. The only, the only ones left, the only ones dumb enough to hang on to this loser as, as, a, as a, an action against me, of which I was absolutely, uh, I did no wrong, was Shasta County. Shasta County joined the team to try to beat up on me on the pretext of an $80 grading permit violation, which everybody in agriculture knows you don't need a grading permit to work a pasture. So that was the origin of that. Uh, in the worst days, I want to tell you, because you, it'll amuse you, now that it's all over, there was uh, 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 two vans of uh, uh, state officials, uh, biologists, they were along the South Fork of Bear Creek with uh, what are, forks and spoons, I kid you not. They were turning over leaf litter. They were counting invertebrates on my ranch. They donned scuba gear and swimmed in the creek to count fish. Not only that, but they tried to rip, uh, rope nymphs, this other federal agency, into it. And I, I, I own the Bear Creek Falls, which is a 200-foot waterfalls that's on that ranch. And uh, one day I was, I was on this side of it, on my side, and there was a nymphs truck on the other side. And they were standing there, two guys from nymphs, looking at it and pointing, trying to see, it, you know, did any salmon ever jump that? <laughs> right? Really? Did a prehistoric salmon ever jump that so that they could get me on a salmon take? I mean, they were just unbelievable. Anyway, they all went away except for Shasta County. I went to see Les Baugh. Help me. Help me. This is so terrible. And I explained the situation. And he pounded his fist on the table of his office and he clenched his jaws and he said, you know, uh, somebody's got to say, enough is enough. How can I help you? And I said, be that man. <laughs> right? So uh, he called me back about 24 hours later and said, oh, geez, I just can't be that man. <clears throat> really, the, the pressure's kind of overwhelming here. And I guess I'm going to have to go along with the county slapping your wrist. That's the word he used. We're going to slap your wrist. It'll be just a slap on the wrist compared to what the state's going to do to you. But I wish it could have been better. So I went to see Glenn Hawes. I said, my supervisor cannot be that man. And you're in agriculture. Can you be that man? I mean, this is ridiculous, right? So I toured him around my place, and we had a good time. I'm, I'm actually, even still today, I think I'm the best customer of Hawes in their entire history. I bet you if you compared me against anybody, I'd still be there. Anyway, Glenn happened to mention, oh, I don't know why they're behaving like this. I just don't know. To go back to Gary Cadd's point, just don't know what they do over there in that division. If only we could do something about it. Uh, by the way, I have a wetlands mitigation bank. Um, this is Glenn to me. By the way, I have a wetlands mitigation bank. And so I'm just suggesting that maybe if you buy some wetlands mitigation credits, this could all be a lot easier for you, just in case. <laughs> so that's how I got on to the, that whole badness that we're all suffering for in here. Uh, the Board of Supervisors knows exactly how that division of resources management behaves. Why they allow that to continue is, is a, it's a source of serious shame and dishonor for them to do that. Uh, it's cleverly engineered. You probably, if Gary gets up there, the person will say, oh, I don't know, that's, uh, who is in charge of that? Well, what can we do? How, you know, and they'll just ring their, you know, like, do this number. Oh, God. <laughs> They rub their hands and they, and they tell you why they're impotent, why they cannot do anything. Uh, I sued them, as everybody knows, right? Uh, I, 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 I prevailed with the, the first thing that, what do they do first? Say, 
Your Honor, don't look at this case. This case has no merit, and, and we're immune. They tried that three times. So we won those three, and then they put it into the appellate court on this uh, baseless uh, premise that my suing them for mistreating me is a breach of their right of free speech. <laughs> That's, that was exactly what it is. Do you want to know what the speech exactly was that I took uh, offense to? On February 1st, 2008, myself, um, Doug LaMalfa's was representative at the time, Willie Preston, uh, Glenn Hawes, Les Baugh, Larry Lees, and Russ Mull, and my wife, we were all on the pasture together. We were showing that there was no grading done here. We didn't do any leveling or grading. In any case, I showed them the Right to Farm Act, where you can't object even if we do that. And Russ Mull, who's a tall guy, you know, he stood in the pasture and he said, well, yeah, all right, well look, if you don't pay me for a grading permit up here, I could hold up your CO at the winery, because we hadn't got our certificate of occupancy yet. That is what I objected to. And I said, you know, I'm a bit combative, right? I said, you try that and I will sue you. And he said, no, you can't sue the state of California. And I said, why not? And he said, well, they have unlimited resources. And I said, so do I. <laughs> and he said, well, they'll tie you up in court for years. And I said, no, I'll tie you up in court for years. So... <laughs> That's where I've been for years, fighting them in court. Now in the appellate court, you know, I looked around, there's the three, five judges up there, and I'm, you know, everybody knows who I am, right? I'm a rich, Catholic, white, East Coaster, who's an ex-Marine, heavy duty Republican, and I'm in a California court. I don't know what my chances are. Well, <laughs> they, they, they sided with me. I won that appeal, and they said, this is five times judges have said that. No, this is a prima facie case, which it's, it's, a, it's a case right on its face. And he's likely to prevail. So he wins. The county does not pay his costs in the appellate court. The, you know, wait, 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 wait. You know, what they, you know what they did next? We got that judgment. You know what they did? They, appeal, they, appa they appealed the appeal again to the appellate court the next day. So the appellate court, in 38 hours, sent it back and said, did you not hear us the first time? <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they kicked it back. Now we're in the trial court. Right now we're in the trial court, and we have caused discovery. Give us all your documents. And this is the list. This is the deposition schedule. We want to put this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy under oath in our offices. Um, at that point, they asked for terms to settle. So I went down there and I, uh, uh, I, we sent them a list. I talked to Larry Lees. Larry Lees is supposed to be the good guy, right? Oh, they work it out with Larry. So I sat down there with Larry Lees. Well, th these are our terms. And one of them was, I want them to apologize to everyone for the way they've been doing business with us. He said, we can't do that. Well, it'd be, it'd be a... It'd be a liability if we apologized. Right? And I said, well, apologize to me. I don't know. We didn't, that, uh, things didn't start to go so well. Meanwhile, what they were doing was working up these red tags. I did not know that. Uh, four days after they asked for terms to settle this case with me that they'd been losing, they came and hung red tags on the chapel. Now, the chapel is a very expensive building, number one. We didn't cut any corners or spare any cost in making it a beautiful thing. Plus, we had submitted our permit plans and everything. We provided that permit to them long ago. Oh, God, it must be 10 months ago now. More. Maybe over a year we had started. They wanted some revisions, more engineering. We gave them that. And we had to pay again. And they just sat on the permit. Well, the, the Permit uh, Streamlining Act of California says if, the, if they don't act on your permit within 60 days, it's deemed approved. 
So we're well ahead. Anyway, they hung a red tag on the chapel. Then they came back uh, two days later and hung red tags on my office. It's really my wife's office. It's a couple of horse stalls is all it is. And it's been a ranch office for years, right? Two horse stalls in the horse barn, hung a red tag on it. Then my, my main dining room and my event tent. And by the way, I want you to know, while they're doing this, I just stood there and ripped them down. They said, we just have to photograph it. And they literally photograph it with my hand on it because I'm ripping this down, right? The contractors were very, you know, very glad. I, th I don't know. I guess a lot of times if people get hit with a red tag, they do stop. But I'm not about to. Number one, I, I, I'm a contract flyer for the sheriff's office, right? I, I fly helicopters for the dope missions, a at cost, by the way. And they don't always pay that bill. But I keep doing it. I've been doing it for years. But I know those guys. So I called up the sheriff and I said, this is this crazy red tag thing. Are you going to enforce this? I mean, is, is, are we going to be, once again, I'm going to ask you for a private room in the jail? Because we've been there before. He said, no, no, he said, it's ridiculous, I won't enforce it. I'm repeating to you, just verbatim, the conversations that I've had with these people. I have no idea if they'll repeat these things to your face, but you can trust me, I'm telling you, this is what we have said to each other. It's ridiculous. You mean Mull and that group, the Red Tech? No, it's ridiculous, I'm not going to enforce it. <clears throat> so I've torn them down. Today I filed in uh, the federal court on the Amendment 1 violation of what that means to red tag a private Catholic chapel. I said to the guy who was doing it, you understand that's an establishment of a religion, right? You understand you hang a, a sign on it, you're about to breach the First Amendment. You, there's no problem, you have no problem understanding English, do you? I said, no, but I'm just doing what I was told, you know. I said, who, who told you to do that? He said, R Rick Simon. Yeah. I didn't say this at the time because I wasn't, you know, f quick enough uh, with my, my brain. But that's exactly how six million people got killed in Europe. Because they just said, well, I was just doing what I'm told. You know, that, to me, that's no excuse for a man to make, ever. And I didn't accept that off of him. Thank you, that's very generous. I just, that's what my father would say to me if I tried that. Now, I wasn't, I'm not allowed to uh, apologize for a hideous action by saying I was told to do it. Um, so that's where, where we are at, except the chapel now is, in, is working. It has, uh, we have had mass in there uh, as of uh, Saturday. It's uh, the, with the Catholic, clergy, etc. It's been uh, all, all done. It's, it's solid now. By the way, I want to tell you something. For me to do that, as a Catholic, the first uh, permit, permit I have to get is from a, a, a bishop. So the Bishop of Sacramento, that's where my fingers were crossed. It was the abbot of the, of the monastery in New Clairvaux in Vina. He said, I can't believe you did this. He said, I remember I wrote to the bishop, but I didn't think he'd ever give you permission to build this. I said, really? I didn't know that. I said, I was smart to ask you to write that letter then that day. And they did give me the permission, but that's the one that counts. However, it is written right in there in the document that I have that is my permit. It's for private use only. Private mass. My family friends, invited guests. I am not allowed to have weddings, baptisms, parties, funerals, no public events whatsoever. That's in the document to me. That's the document that binds the usage of that chapel. And besides, whatever, anybody who's been to our place or who will come, as I hope you will, you'll see we have a marble a Greek wedding pavilion that has already been built, which is near the event's buffet line. That's where we do weddings. This has nothing to do with weddings. Um, we have, by the way, at that event thing, I'm, I'm supposed to say my wife's getting irritated if I don't mention that we have Ann Coulter coming on March 23rd there. So, yeah, so that'll be very fun. 
She's coming up to our place on. Uh, she's spent a couple of nights on the on on that Friday night. She'll she'll give a talk. I think no more formally than this. I, I it will be less formal even than this. Uh, this meeting that we're having here, because there will be wine, of course, there'll be some snacks, and you can move around at my place. You don't have to stay in your seats. So she'll talk, and uh, I, I hope anybody who likes her as much as I do will come. And uh, uh, oh, I hope nobody protests her, for Christ's sake. But in, anyway, we're just having... <laughs> we think it, there's no agenda for it. It's not in support of any cause. It's just because I think she'd be a fun person to have in a radical right-wing establishment where there is nobody to overlook what she says. You know, that's what I think. So that's, basically that's my story. I, I hope if you got, if I, I understand some people want to come up to the chapel on the 27th and I heartily, uh, I heavily support that. I might not be there because I hope I'll be in depositions with, with these bastards, <laughs> really. <laughs> Uh, by the way, they're asking, they, uh, you should know this, since they've been losing all the time in court, at your expense, which, when I prevail, you'll, through them, will all have to pay back to me, they went and got a much more expensive uh, law firm now called Best, Best, and Krieger. Be, you know, because all they can do is kind of put on their safety belts, because they're hitting the wall here. So rather than face these depositions, rather than just allow you to hear the explanation from their mouths for why they are doing the things that they are doing. They hired this uh, a new law firm who is now trying to get them a protective order. These high-ranking public officials, Glenn Hawes, Les Ball, Larry Lees, Russ Mull, they're too high. They're too important to be deposed. This is what they're saying. They're too important to, to be or to be troubled or to be uh, harassed by my questions, or to be taken to task in the press. This is what there's, this is the, so I have to fight that motion tomorrow morning um, with the attorneys, you know. But that's the new thing. That new law firm is going to cost the county about $100,000, and I'm having this, that's from uh, uh, attorneys who have fought with them before. So no way are they getting better or more compliant, or are they thinking, you know, we really got to stop acting this way. In fact, they're doubling down on it. And what they're doubling down on is that there will be no resistance. They have, they've, they've, they've never, according to Trish Clark, they've never actually sat down, taken an oath, and had uh, had to answer questions before. That's what I hope. That's what I think I can do for us. But what, what they, <laughs> I'm very happy to do that, but what, they, what, what, what I cannot do is provide the mass of people that you are. You know that what they like to do is to explain that it's just a fight between an eccentric guy, just me, and them. They really haven't hurt you at all. They're, they're, they're doing a terrific job of providing your service to you. That's what they say. Oh, you know, that's, that, that's their line. Oh, the, the problem's just with that, that Anselmo guy. He's trouble or whatever. I say if, 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 if we can't be helpful to each other in this thing and at, right at this time, it's going to go very, very badly here. Because they will, if they never have to answer questions or if they won't respond to what you demand of them, losing that fight would would make a ruling a municipal ruling class here and so that they're accountable to no one if you read the documents that you know they serve me in papers that is a notion that they already uh, they already claim that right now that's uh, that's the way they see themselves they are the rulers of you we do not have the right to demand something better of them. I would say, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, what my attorney said, well, what is a, a, a whole mass of people, what are they going to go in there and demand? And it has to be like a sound bite, doesn't it? Well, all I can think is privatize that damn department. Here's a, who needs the government to do it? Well, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, Wyatt Paxson is here. If if any, ever, if could you just stand up for a second? That's Wyatt Paxson, everybody. He's the only. 
He worked in that office for a number of years. He knows all the laws, all the ways the permits are supposed to be uh, handled. And he was the head of uh, permitting and planning in uh, Trinity County, where there was, it was a, just not a problem. You could get it, what you, you, he would work for you. He tried to help you. And we have a, a, something very, very opposite to that here. And it's not just an attitude. And I'm saying that because I, do, I don't know what we're going to find in this discovery. But I was in Hollywood a long time. And when something is so contrary to everyone's in interest, it's because there's a crime in there. The only reason anybody acts this insane and this contrary to their own mutual interests is because they're, they're, they're trying to hide a crime from you. That's what I hope I will prove in court. But I hope that you all go down there, at, at, whether it's on the 28th or whenever, and just tell them we're, we're, we're done. We're done in, with you telling us how it is. We don't work for you. You work for us. If they don't hear that loud, it'll be lost.